Welcome to module F lecture 9. In this lecture, we shall discuss about stochastic traffic assignment techniques. In lecture 8, we discussed about capacity restraint algorithm, the regular capacity restraint algorithm and also the problem or the potential problem of the flow flip flop and then the modified algorithm for capacity restraint assignment to handle that kind of problem. We took an example to tell you step by step how this algorithm can be applied and uh, to get the solution. Then we also discussed about the method of successive average, explained the algorithm, the steps and took an example to demonstrate that how that method of successive average can be applied to uh, solve uh, the, or to get the solution for a given situation. Now, in continuation to our uh, lecture or the discussion on this traffic assignment topic, we shall now go to stochastic assignment. Uh, this is already you know the ninth lecture. So, we are happy to see that most of the boxes are marked as green we have already covered. So, now we take up the stochastic assignment in this lecture and then specific under stochastic assignment the pure stochastic assignment that algorithm or that approach we shall describe. So, so far we said that uh, in user optimal equilibrium, nobody or no user would be able to choose a route where the travel time is lower than the present travel time for the chosen route. And that if nobody can get a better route, no individual can get a better route then we said that that is the network is in user equilibrium, because every user has got the best deal. Now, if you rethink what is this travel time, we say 10 minute, 15 minute, but then how people take decision, anybody tells all user uniformly that exactly the current travel time is 10 minute or current travel time is 15 minute, answer is no. Then how the route is taken or route choice is done by individual, it is based on the perceived travel time and you will accept that the perceived travel time when you choose a route you choose based on your understanding of travel time. What is the travel time along route A and what is the long travel time along route B as you perceive and then you choose the one which you think will minimize your travel time. So, in reality travelers perception of travel time are subjected to variations because a traveler who travels every day and a traveler who travels maybe occasionally, a traveler who travels uh, you know once in a while, everybody makes decision, everybody every individual makes a decision, but their decision is based on their own perceived travel time, whatever they got information if I am a new traveler maybe I will uh, check some website and then public domain whatever information is available or if I know my friend I may ask and then once I travel based on my own experience I will decide how much travel time it takes. So, these travel times perceived travel times are subjected to variations and therefore, route chosen are based on in reality based on perceived travel time than the actual travel time. Who knows the actual travel time? So, it is all the perception. Now, users have limited information about the network 
and their transportation option, what modes are available. Of course, in the context, present context, we are talking about the route for going from an origin to a destination. So, therefore, whatever we said so far, travel time 10 minute, travel time 15 minute, if we consider that they are the true travel time, now the question is we rethink and we question ourselves that you know what is this travel time? What does it mean in reality if somebody is making a decision? And we realize that it is actually the decision is taken based on perceived travel time and the perceived travel time will not be same to every individual due to so many reasons, limitations in information, uh, their own experience, their own knowledge about the network, about the alternative routes and so on. Okay. So, and also sometimes the decision may not be based on only travel time, but may be based on you know some other factors as well. As you have seen the, the uh, discrete choice model when we talked about uh, uh, in the context of mode choice, the probabilistic choice model. We talked about the first about the deterministic model and then probabilistic model. So, you remember recollect and remember all the points what we mentioned there, the possible error. So, here also uh, there will be possible errors and uh, the perceived travel time may be very different from the actual or the true travel time, because the true travel time users may not even know. So, altogether then there is a need to relook at this user equilibrium in the sense that we should we know now the whatever root choice happens is not does not happen based on the actual travel time, but it is based on the perceived travel time by every individual. So, every individual makes a decision, tries to optimize or minimize his or her own travel time, but her own perceived travel time, not the actual travel time. So, it is more logical to base the equilibrium, whatever we said as user equilibrium, on the perception of users, where each user assigns himself or herself on a path that he or she perceives is the shortest. This is the basic consideration in the stochastic equilibrium. So, with that assumption, whatever user equilibrium we will reach now, it is still user equilibrium, but every individual is trying to minimize his or her own perceived travel time, not the actual travel time. Routes are chosen in reality and as per this assumption or uh, realization based on perceived travel time rather than the actual travel time and therefore, may be perceived shortest cost, shortest route rather than actual shortest route or shortest path. So, everything is perceived, my travel time is perceived travel time and my chosen or the shortest path is my perceived shortest path. So, stochastic traffic assignment emphasizes the variability in driver's perception of cost. Cost is a general representation of deterrence, it may mean travel time, it may mean distance or the cost, travel cost, whatever you say. And also the composite measure it seeks to minimize. As I said, sometimes it may not be the travel time alone, but travel time and distance and maybe also the generalized cost and so on and so forth. So, according to stochastic equilibrium, all reasonable paths, that means paths that logically go from one origin to one destination in a practical manner between an origin and a destination will have flow because of this variability in the travel time, perceived travel time and because that the perception varies widely. 
So, it is and everybody is trying to select route based on perceived travel time. So, obviously, it is it will be away from the reality and the real shortest path only will get loaded that is not going to happen. Multiple paths will be used because of the variation in the perceived travel time. So, we can also look at this classification which is quite interesting. Is capacity restraint included? That is one question, answer may be yes or no. Is stochastic effect included? The answer may be again yes or no. Now, if we are not considering capacity and if we are not considering the stochastic effect, then it is all or nothing. Everybody takes the shortest path. Perfect information, no variation in the perceived travel time, everybody knows the exactly the true travel time. There is no capacity restraint, so there is no variability in the perceived travel time and there is no capacity constant. So, everybody goes along just one path that is shortest path and no flow takes place in any other path. Now, we do not consider stochasticity, but we consider the capacity restraint. Assume that the routes or paths have got they are all physical infrastructure. So, they have limited capacity and depending on the flow, the flow may be even more than the capacity or even if it is not more than the capacity, then also because of congestion effect, the shortest path definition may change and the flow may have to uh, be on a uh, different route other than this only the shortest path. And through that, so that means I am considering the capacity constraint but I am considering that there is no stochasticity, no variation in the perceived travel time. Then I get deterministic user equilibrium and that is what we initially told you as what drops equilibrium. So, we call it DUE deterministic user optimal equilibrium. Now, then the other two are remaining. I do not consider capacity constraint but consider the stochasticity or the variability in the perceived travel time. Then it is pure stochastic algorithm, Dial's algorithm or Burrell's algorithm. You have not yet uh, discussed, we have not yet discussed, but you will know them gradually some of those. And then if you consider the stochasticity effect that yes, the variability is likely to happen, that is what is the reality and also the capacity constraints will be there that is also a reality. Then whatever equilibrium we are looking for or we are expected to get in reality that is stochastic user equilibrium. It is not deterministic user equilibrium, but because the stochasticity is considered. So, it is stochastic user equilibrium. Now, in case of pure stochastic equilibrium, that means we are not considering the capacity constraint, but we are only considering the variability in the perceived travel time. A spread of the route is produced between two points because of the variability in the perceived root cost. Again I say the cost is a general depiction of deterrence. It may be you can call it perceived root travel time or perceived root travel cost whatever it is. Now, remember that in case of pure user optimized equilibrium or user optimal equilibrium, it is because of the capacity constraint effects. Why the root is not only the shortest root when I do not consider the stochasticity. You assume that there is a perfect knowledge. Everybody knows the correct travel time along every alternative path. So, there is no question of any variation in the perceived travel time. In that case also multiple paths are taken. Why multiple paths are taken in DV? It is because of the capacity restraint effect capacity consideration. So, capa demand may be more than the capacity or demand may be even less than the capacity, but still the congestion effect will be there. So, multiple paths will be chosen. End of the day multiple paths will be chosen, 
but in stochastic user equilibrium stochastic equilibrium not stochastic user equilibrium pure stochastic equilibrium still multiple paths will be chosen but the reason is very different that fundamental should be very clear that reason is variability in the perceived travel time or perceived travel cost nobody you know people don't have idea about the true travel time or true travel cost it is just the perception perceived travel time so perceived travel time likely to vary so multiple paths will be chosen by people because they will think those corresponding paths are the shortest path that's what their perception so both cases we are likely to get multiple paths which will get which will have flow more than zero but pure stochastic it is only due to the variation in the perceived travel time that's what we say due to stochasticity and in pure user optimal equilibrium rather due multiple paths will be there again the multiple paths will be chosen but the reason is very different reason is the capacity restraint effect or the capacity consideration and the congestion or the limited capacity consideration fine so with that let's go to the pure stochastic what is happening in pure stochastic equilibrium traffic assignment we consider the spread of the route and it is produced the spread is produced between two points of of the variability in the perceived route cost that means multiple routes will be chosen because of the variability in the perceived route travel time or route travel cost od flows are usually spread over multiple path because as i said there will be variability in the travel time so not everybody will not have the exact same information so everybody's perceived perceived shortest path will also be different so some people will think path a is the will give the uh, optimal or the uh, shortest path or the travel time minimum travel time somebody will think path b somebody will think path c right this variability is expected that's what is the reality so od flows are usually spread over multiple paths and therefore this assignment sometimes is referred to as multi path assignment because multiple paths flows are there even when there is you know the demand is insignificant as compared to capacity i bring another consideration because if you see this uh, you consider a network where the demand is not so high as compared to capacity still there will be multiple paths where the flow will be distributed just because of the perception perception in the variability in the perceived travel time so two algorithms or approach are widely used one is the monte carlo based approach on probit choice path and the other is logit like expression you are very familiar with the logit like expression probit model we have not covered but we said that what assumption of error what distributional assumption lead to probit model at least we said that and we say the the other estimation complexity associated with probit model so monte carlo based technique also can be used for logit like expression here we'll talk about the logit like expression this is known to you so now the uh, remaining thing becomes a little simple we are considering that utility of using r path utility of travel between i and j along path r so that's why it is written as u i j r equal to minus theta c i j c i j is the cost of c i j r so cost of travel it may be travel time travel cost generalized cost whatever you take so theta is a coefficient okay and or a parameter positive parameter and c i j r is the cost of travel between i and j via or through route r plus there is an error term so the true utility is measurable 
portion of the utility that is measurable portion is the CIGR plus an error term. So, how the logic root choice will happen? What, what is the probability of taking a particular root R while traveling from I to J? It is P i J R equal to e to the power minus theta C i J R divided by e to the power minus theta C i J R sum over all R, sum over all paths R, there are multiple paths. So, sum over all R. This is very much like the logit model what you already know and you have we have discussed in the context of mode choice and the probabilistic choice model it's very similar expression. Now, what is theta? Now, theta is a positive parameter associated with the random cost component which can be used to control the spread of trips among routes. I would generally say that it is a positive parameter associated with the cost component. Okay. And this theta value can be used to control the spread. For example, if the theta is large, a large value of theta with that when you uh, actually do the assignment, what it means the perception error is small. And therefore, traveler will tend to choose more the actual minimum cost route, more likely to choose actual minimum cost route. Or we can say still the variability will be there, but the variability will be less as compared to a theta value which is small. So, theta value if it is small higher the th smaller the theta value the larger will be the variance or the variability in the perception and travelers may considering routes you know more likely to consider routes with higher cost or more and more traveler will go there. Now, for all value of theta, theta can be have any value any positive value we said all routes receive flow regardless of their travel time. Only thing the fraction or the share, how much of the total demand, what fraction will come to a route or what fraction will get distributed even to higher cost route, right? that will get controlled by what is the value of theta. So, as I say if it is large, then more and more will take actually the shortest path and the variability variation or routes with higher cost will get probably lesser uh, share, but if the theta is small more and more share will go to the higher cost route. And well theta tends to 0 almost like 0 that will mean more and more I said that it will go larger variation. So, it will mean that all routes in the OD pair almost will receive an equal share that we will end up with theta equal to 0. So, consider an example quickly that uh, we have an OD flow. So, link 1, link 2, two travel time functions are given and let us say theta equal to 2 minute to the power minus 1. Okay? So, value of theta is actual value is 2. Now, we want to distribute OD flow. So, you simply calculate you know that logic like expression what we said earlier. Uh, I will go back to that slide here probability of uh, P i j r how much share it will get while traveling from i to j in this case only two nodes are there 1 to i to j or 1 to 2 and two paths r equal to 1 r equal to 2. So, you know e to the power minus theta i j r divided by e to the power minus theta i j r sum over all roots. So, in this case sum over root 1 and root 2 you get that. So, that is what you get, but you also know x 1 plus x 2 equal to 6 the total 6 unit flows are to be distributed. So, x 2 equal to 6 minus x 1. So, you do that substitution and also you know probability of taking path 1 will be what x 1 by 6. So, x 1 by 6 equal to 1 plus 1 plus e to the power uh, 2 within bracket minus 11 plus 3 x 1 that comes out the substitution. So, it is a simple calculation not a big thing and once you solve you find x 1 equal to 3.56 3.6 and x 2 equal to 2.4 and the corresponding travel times are 
5.6 and 5.8, not exactly same. We do not expect it because of the you know variability or because of the error in the perceived travel time. So, uh, that is what the solution what we get. Now, we go to dials algorithm to tell you how you apply it. It works in two parts part A and part B. Part A understand it, it is not complicated you can and I will I shall also take an example to show you step by step how the calculation are done. Uh, that will be even more but the more uh, that will be more convenient and comfortable for you to understand it very clearly. But let us state that algorithm and then we go to an example to show you the application. Part A is the forward pass. What we do? We try to find out the shortest path 3 for a given network and we start from one node. So, one node to all other node we find out the shortest path. Then process nodes in order of increasing minimum cost from the origin. So, if my origin 1 and if I am taking 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5 like that, I find out the shortest path cost uh, and then I shall process the destination nodes as per the increasing minimum cost. So, that means among all the nodes whichever will be the starting node always will have the list and then all others. Uh, so, others also the cheapest or the minimum cost to a destination that destination will be processed first followed by the immediate next higher cost whatever may be the destination that destination we shall process. And starting from the origin O with W O equal to 1 where is the origin starting that weightage will take 1 and processing of other nodes i in order of increasing minimum cost. So, how what will be the value of weightage we will calculate w i j w i j will be w i into w i j equal to w i that means where is my i node e to the power minus theta c i j or 0 depending on whether z y is less than z o j, o is the origin node and we are talking about link i j. Okay. So, if z y less than z o j then w i j will be w i into e to the power minus theta c i j and if the z y j is greater than z o j then it will be 0 and then finally, what will be the total weight assigned to node j? It is sum over all the links which are coming and their weight. So, it is w m j assuming from various aims the connection is our connections are coming to j. So, what will be the sum of all the weights of the links which are connecting to j? Then b is the backward pass. In backward pass what we do? The link flows can be calculated in the reverse order. We start with the destination link furthest one where the finally the flow will reach and initialize initially all flows to 0 and T i equal to 0, T i j equal to 0 that is the initialization and then set the current node i to be the destination and initialize its flow and then come back slowly. I think the remaining part I shall explain with the example and then later on you can come back and see the steps you will follow it very easily. So, let me take an example consider the network in figure with travel times given on the links assume that the root choice is governed by a logit model with parameter theta equal to 0 0.5 minute to the power 1 minus 1 and find the flow pattern and the total flow from node i to node 4 is 1000 unit. So, we want to assign 1000 unit flows from node 1 to node 4. The first what will go step 1 and step 2 step 1 will be forward pass that is what we said here part A or part B. 
So, part A is the forward pass. So, what we do? Let us try to understand clearly. We start with node 1, we start with uh, node 1 and then 1 is connected to 2, 1 is connected to 3, 2 is connected to 3, 2 is connected to 4, 3 is connected to 4 and these are the cost. So, here easily since it is a small network you do not need a separate algorithm to calculate it. Of course, this is the classroom example. So, I have taken a small example. So, this is the shortest path is known. So, what we are doing? We are arranging them in order. Remember the order what we said here? In order of increasing minimum cost, please. In order of increasing minimum cost, that is what is told. So, what we are doing here? So, you take node 1, starting node, the cost is 0, the order is 1. You see 2, the shortest path cost is 2, 3, shortest path cost is 3.5, 4, 2 plus 2, 4, that is the shortest path. So, order becomes first 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And what are the cost? Cost is 0 for 1, 2 for 2, 3.5 for 3 and 4 for 4. So, because of this as per the cost we are putting them. So, the order is 1, 2, 3, 4. Then what we will do? We will process these nodes as per their order. So, what will be there? We start from 1. What will be the weight for 1, 2? I go back here. It is w i e to the power minus theta c i j. So, weight for 1 is 1, 1 w i into e to the power minus theta is 0 0.5 and what is the C i j value? This C i j value is 2. So, e to the power minus 2 into 0 0.5. So, you get you get then 0 0.37. W 2 3 what will be for this links? Next thing W 2 3. This 2 3 will be 2 weightage for 2, weightage for 2 is what? Then the total weightage for 2 will be only this node is coming, the other 2 are going from 2 to 4, 2 to 3. So, how much total is coming? 0.37. So, it is 0.37 into e to the power minus theta c i j, theta is 0.5, c i j, j is 3, node 3, node 3 what? Uh, node 3 is 3. And then 1 3, 3 point, uh, 1 again 1 to 3 is 1 and e to the power minus theta c i j. So, c i j is what? Here 3.5. So, here the cost is 3.5. So, here it is 3.5 and when you consider 2 3 this cost is 3. So, you consider this also as 3 okay. and 1 to 2 this is 2. So, you consider this as 2. So, like that you calculate w 1 2 w 2 3 w 1 3. Now, once I have calculated let us say what will be then the weight for this node 3 go back it will be w m j sum over all m whichever nodes are coming where from they are coming. So, 1 to j, 2 to j, 3 to j like that sum over all those weights. Now, you can see 3 it is coming only from 1 to 3 and 2 to 3 that is all. 3 to 4 is going out 3 to 4 not coming to 3 coming to 3 is only 1 to 3 and 2 to 3. So, 1 to 3 what is the weight? 0 0.08 that is what we have calculated and 2 to 3 
and 1 to 3 0 0.17. So, what is the weight for this node 3? Weight for node 3 will be 0 0.08 plus 0 0.17, so 0 0.25. So, weight for node 1 is 1, weight for node 2 is just only 1 to 2 is going, no other link. So, 0 0.37, 3 as we calculated 0 0.25. So, we calculated this weights for note each note 1, 2. Similarly, 3 to 4, 2 to 4 and then these weights are calculated as 2 to 4, 0.14. Here it is 0 0.15 and then note 4, the total weight is 0 0.14 plus 0 0.15 because 2 to 4 is coming from 2 to 4. 3 to 4 coming from 3 to 4, no other link is coming. So, 4 total weights is 0 0.29. So, all these uh, are done as per exactly whatever is shown here. W i j how we calculate and then how we calculate W j. Exactly the this, this and this part, these are the two components we are considering. So, accordingly we have calculated. So, now we know each link in the network, what are the weights and each node in the network, what are the weights. So, for all nodes and all links, we have the weights and we process them in which order as per this order. Now, the back part, backward pass. So, the forward pass we do. Backward pass is easy, very simple. What we do? We know that 1 to 2, how many are coming? Finally, 1 to 4, 1000 trips. So, finally, if 1000 trips are coming to 4, weight, total weight for node 4 is 0 0.29 and which are the links that are connecting 2, 4, 2, 4 and 3, 4. These are the two links. 2, 4 weight 0.14, 3, 4 weight 0.15 and total node weight is 0 0.29 which is the sum of this thing. So, what will be then T 2, 4? How much will be assigned to 2, 4? 2, 4 will be 1000 into this 0 0.14 divided by 0 0.29. So, 1000 into 0.14 by 0.29. So, you get 483. How much will be the 3, 4? 3, 4 will be this 0 0.15, 1000 into 0 0.15 divided by total weight of node 4, 0 0.29. So, you get 517. So, you know that this is 517 and you know this is 483. Now, once you know Accordingly, you do, you know that 517 is coming from 3 to 4. So, total 3 flow coming or the demand coming is 3. Where from they are coming? They are coming 1 to 3 and 2 to 3. So, 1 to 3 is how much? 0 0.17, 2 to 3, 0 0.08 and the total weights of node 3 is 0 0.25. So, how much will be the 1 3? 1 3 will be 0 0.17 by 0 0.25 that is ratio multiplied by 517. So, you see that is what we have done 0 0.17 by 0 0.25 multiplied by 517. So, it is 352. What will be the 2 3? 2 3 will be 517 into 0 0.08 by 0 0.25. 0 0.08 by 0 0.25. So, you get 165. What will be the 1 2? 1 2. Now, you know 2 to 4 is 483, 2 to 3 is 165. So, total how much is coming from 2? 648. This uh, 483 plus 165. So, 4 648. So, this whole 648 and there is only one link which is coming to 2. So, 1 to 2 will have all this 648. So, what is the distribution? You get the distribution like this. So, 1000 is getting originated from 1, 648 going to 2, 
352 is going to 3, then from 2 out of 648, 483 are going to 224, 165 is coming from going from 2 to 3 and the 3 is total getting 517 and this 517 is going from 3 to 4, that is what it is, that is the way you get it. So, what we discussed here is the pure stochastic assignment, why, what, where the stochasticity come from, why we go for stochastic assignment and then uh, explain the principle and then explain to you the dial algorithm with an example. So, with this I close this lecture, thank you so much.